and I have to be brutally honest to my fellow citizens. We must face up to the reality. We must build our country. Unlike other Labor Day celebrations where the president's speech is full of promises of better days to come, President William Ruto's sentiments today were to prepare Kenyans for hard times ahead, saying that they should be ready to work as it's only their taxes that can sustain the country's economy. Tumejidanganya muda mrefu ya kwamba nchi inaweza kujengwa na madeni kutoka nchi zingine. It is not possible. And I have to be brutally honest to my fellow citizens. We must face up to the reality. We must build our country with our energy, with our knowledge, with our talent, with our effort, with our plan, and with our taxes. That's how we are going to build this country. The president, very clear about the tough decisions and painful choices that have to be made. We need to tighten our belts and live within our means as a country in order to make more resources available to manage our economic challenges and to invest in goods and services that benefit all, not just some citizens. Ruto said this amid growing concerns about the state of Kenyans slimming payslip with the government, among others, raising the National Social Security Fund and SSF contribution from 200 shillings monthly to 6% of workers' salaries where they are expected to contribute 1,080 to the fund. Employers are also to contribute to the new Social Health Insurance Fund, which the government has proposed a rate of 2.75% of salary. For their continued support. According to Labor Cabinet Secretary Florence Bore, it's only through these deductions that the government will be able to run. She however said that the government has now put in place policies that will see many Kenyans access employment. The demand for labor in the digital economy necessitates the need to devise new strategies in governance and policy framework for fair distribution of gains and opportunities. We have a deliberate program on how to create more jobs. As I talk to you today, we have 140,000 young people who were not working last year, but they are working this year in our housing program. I am very happy that from last year to this year, we have increased our remittances by about 50 billion. And it is my intention that... This, as the Federation of Kenya Employers Chief Executive Officer Jacqueline Mugo insisted that a lot has to be done for workers to rip from their hard-earned money. Your Excellency, these last few days, I've had the Secretary General of Kotu pushing for a general wage increase or saying he'll push for a general wage increase. And I understand where it's coming from because the workers are struggling with a reduction in their take-home pay. But the reality is that there is no legal framework that supports general wage increases in Kenya. Come on, I a kunja macho because Jacqueline said, oh, general wage increase, if that is employer now, it's not anchored on any law. We must have wages council sit and discuss and see how this general wage works. With what seems to be a push and pull between Central Organization of Trade Unions and Federation of Kenya Employers over workers' wages, the president said a wage council is already in place to deal with the issue. I have instructed the Ministry of Labor and Social Protection to activate multiple wage councils outlined in the 2007 Labor Relations Act. These councils include Council for Seafarers, Protective, General and Agricultural Wages. They will negotiate minimum wages in different sectors enhancing conciliation, mediation and industrial peace. With all this said and done, Kenyans, left for their homes with no goodies from the government, but only their shrinking payslips. Amidst the Labor Day celebration, union workers echo a unified call for government action, calling for policy refinement to better address their needs. Linda Koskei from Uhuru Gardens, Nairobi.